Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group overview for the 2nd Armoured French Division and today I'm going to be taking you through the changes that have occurred in my division since I made my last video as well as some of the balance changes and also the reasons why I bring certain units. So let's start off with the recon as usual. So the recon tab hasn't really changed too much. I guess the main difference is the spread of infantry across this tab. I'm bringing in the four units of spy in the Jeep in phase A. They're very cheap. I really like uh, the availability on them. And of course, we'll just be your standard, very high optic uh, recon infantry for phase A. You can also get group of spy in uh, phase A, but I just... I'm not particularly a fan of two-man recon squads in comparison to four-man recon squads because they have the same stealth and they have the same uh, like optics, but uh, they just have less men, so they get killed a lot easier. Um, the other thing with the group of spy is they come in like more expensive transports, so 30 points there, and uh, we have the AMM20, which is a lot more expensive, 40 points there to come with a recon squad, which, which in phase A you don't really have the extra points for, as you will be spending it on your M8 Greyhounds and also your Stuarts in the early phases. So I do still have four AM M8 Spies in my division. I've got the two two-star ones, and then I've got uh, two one-star ones. And... Yeah, I would say that bringing these in is a great idea for punching through like a hole in the enemy lines early on. Uh, very, very good. Also great support for infantry in general and also for your stewards. So really versatile unit, um, quite cheap. They recently got a uh, price buff as well. Um, I think it was down from 90 to 85 points. They used to be really good because they had an like a secret evasion stat but they took that away now so they don't have that anymore but they're still pretty good so yeah especially with the uh, the new price buff coming in so that's why they've remained in my division moving into phase b you can get the m3a3 spay which is the recon stuart you can get a lot better things to spend your points on in phase b so that's kind of a waste to me but i am going to be bringing in one card of the spay in the m3 scout car which comes with the 50 cal machine gun and they are one star you can make them two star and the n3 scout car with a 50 cal can be exceptionally useful for taking on infantry especially with like low infantry availability um, in this division in general um, using the scout car will be something you want to do but let's move on to the infantry tab so there are, now i was just saying about having low availability of infantry they've actually recently increased the availability of the voltages so you can now get four instead of three which is actually quite a dramatic increase and I, I didn't actually used to bring in voltages at all I used to mainly rely on the machine guns but now I don't really have any of the machine guns in phase A in my division I rely on the command voltages with the normal voltages and then I have some pioneers uh, along with the Nueve which are the uh, two-star elite infantry the Spanish infantry so yeah we have uh, the command voltages these are great they have a bazooka, keep them very close to your normal infantry as you will need that bazooka if anything comes rushing through a town and so on. That's normal, I have them in there from the start. Voltages however, they're a new addition since obviously they're, like I was saying, their availability increase, they're now in the division. They have a nice substance, you know, 10 strength squad, they come with a half track, um, can definitely put up a fight uh, they won't necessarily do a lot of damage but they definitely soak a lot of damage and uh, can hold up enemy units quite nicely um, keep them near your command units though so they don't surrender easily because you'd never want any of your infantry as the French to surrender uh, otherwise uh, you kind of put yourself in a really bad spot as for the uh, pioneers these recently got added to my division because of the WC 52 which comes with the 50 cal uh, but also they have the flamethrowers and honestly if you use the voltages command voltages and pioneers as like a like a three-way sort of movement um, you bring in like one of each 
and like attack a town for example and attack all of like the the primary locations on the map you should have like more than enough to like do a quite a lot of damage to the the opponents and and bringing in flame troops as the second armored french i feel catches a lot of people out people don't really expect it so yeah it's a, a nice to have a little bit of uh, bang for your buck in there it would be nice if they had a bit of veterancy but they don't unfortunately but the flamethrowers do more than enough so that's okay then we have the nueve now these guys are just uh, great units they really are because not only do they come in a 50 cal half track they also have decent he at both like 100 meter range and like 200 meter range plus so they have close range ap or he of 10 and long range he of 8 which is really nicely balanced and if you get them three star with the help of the command voltages then they, they'd actually do a serious amount of damage to any units caught out in the open so it's really really nice they have a mg34 on hand which is wonderful so there you go now moving on to phase b we have the sappers and one card of the voltages with the two 30 cal machine guns and they both have their separate uses. The Sapper is just fantastic at close range. They have 10 HE at close range with two satchel charges and a bazooka. Really, really good squad for the late game in uh, sort of confined places. And then you have the Voltages, which are sort of your longer range engagements, uh, depending on the edge of towns, for example, or on the edge of forests, where people might want to run towards you with infantry and you can just mow them down with the uh, exceptional HE these guys have at a distance. So. 12 HE you can put on target at long range. 7 HE at short range is still good. Or well, reasonably good anyway for a 10 man squad. So there you go. Um, just one card of each helps with the diversity. But yeah, the phase A has changed quite a lot in this division uh, for, in the way that I use the infantry. And I just, I, I much prefer bringing in uh, the voltages and the pioneers now just because they're a lot, they have a lot more substance than I used to have with the machine guns. So let's move on to the tanks. With the tanks, not really much has changed in phase A. One card of the Command M3A3s and the uh, Char M5A1. One of each. They accompany each other very nicely. Your M3A3s will make the M5A1s one star. And uh, the M5A1s, they have a little bit more AP, a little bit more armor. And yeah, they're, I think that's about it actually. But still nice little change there and you get the extra availability as well so that helps out now you aren't going to be netting like 1000 points in phase a so i mean spending all your points on these m5a1s can be pretty risky you got to think about the, what else you need so for example you might be spending quite a lot on these m8 spies and these are 85 points each. So what you could possibly afford to do is maybe remove some of the uh, like Jar M5A1s and put in like Command M3A3s instead, and just rely on like the M3A3 uh, Greyhound combo. But uh, I, I think the extra little bit of armor and AP really helps sometimes. So I have them there just in case I need them. And uh, going into the later game, Stuarts are like useful throughout the game because of their availability or ability, sorry, to pin down infantry very quickly with their 330 cal machine guns. Now moving into phase B, uh, we're looking at uh, Char Command M4A1s. So these uh, Shermans with the 75mm guns are pretty decent, honestly, phase B. 11 AP, 10 armor. And you can also get uh, two star variants of them with uh, the same, they're basically exactly the same, I think. Yeah, one's just a command variant and uh, one has uh, more veterancy which is really good and that's more than enough availability than you'll need in phase b again you're working with 1100 points over the 10 minutes and if you're paying 130 points a piece for each of these tanks that's not including the m4a3 with the 76 mil gun then uh yeah you're already spending a lot of points there but one command m4a2 with one of the m4a2s with the two star veterancy make that a three star veteran m4a2 and you're going to be laughing. It's it's actually really, really decent at close range as well because with the extra veterancy, it's exceptionally accurate. So not only will it aim really fast because the turret rotation speed on the Shermans is generally faster than like Panthers and Panzer IVs, it, uh, it also actually hits, which is 
a bonus, <laughs> I guess, uh, and quite uh, necessary, honestly, in order to win those engagements. Now, I would definitely recommend having at least one M4A 376mm in your division on phase B. They are quite expensive, but uh, definitely required to take out some of the more armored units that the Axis side will start throwing at you in phase B, so definitely necessary. If you engage these at like 1,000 meter range, again, use the snapshot, keep them behind like a tree line, pull them out, and they're within 1,000 meter range. And yeah, you might be allowing like a Stug, for example, to engage you at its ideal range, but you'll get that slightly more AP power that you need to penetrate. So at 1,000 meter range, you're going to be actually having 15 AP. And uh, if you have a command unit near this, which makes it two star in phase B, very, very strong. Same goes for phase C, 15 AP at 1000 meter range engagement with three star veteran C, you don't really miss, you hit your target and you get those kills and it is really, really satisfying. Um, just like poking out with these and getting those kills. So yeah, in phase C, just taking both of the two star M4A376 mils. Now, in comparison to what I used to take, um, this is actually pretty similar, honestly. I did at one point change the availability. So I, I think I removed the M4A3 in phase B and had like more availability of M4A3s. But uh, honestly, I don't feel it's worth it because like, you just need that extra punching power. The thing that can happen though is when you get into the later phases, you really lack availability in tanks, but it's, it's up to you guys if you uh, really feel that uh, the M4A375 mils are going to do the job. Let's have a look at the support tab. So the first things we're going to be looking at is there's literally nothing that I would buy in phase A. These uh, flamethrower squads, honestly, they could sneak into the division like somewhere um, if there was like an extra activation point on the support tab because they've been reduced from 20 points to uh, 15 points and it kind of makes them just worth bringing in behind some like voltages for example like you could have the voltages moving first then just have like a two-man flamethrower squad follow up but i just tend to do that with the pioneers anyway but the 15 points is, is really ideal for that sort of combination anyway in phase a the equipment that you get is just not great and you're not going to really have many points to spend it on in phase a like your phase a is primarily going to be m8s with your infantry and the uh, stewards here so in the support tab you don't you don't really need anything extra i mean if you could get an m4a3 the abuzia one then you would probably get one in phase a if you could but you can't you can only get the m8 scots and uh, these don't really do the job in comparison so what i'm doing is leaving basically availability slots for these m4a3s in the later phases with the 105 mil guns uh, to take on things like flak 88s and 1200 meter range uh, at because if you fire position these short um, they will still stun those units and, and get kills so yeah that's nice and that's something to think about and moving on to the anti-tank um, this is basically a a tab that I guess I've added to by one card, but not too much has changed. I still take one M10 in phase A, which I don't always bring in, honestly. It depends what division I'm playing against. But if I'm playing against, for example, the 12th SS and I want to get rid of like their Cromwell early on, I'll bring in an M10. You just got to be careful of the Firefly. Um, there's other sort of situations where that's necessary as well where like armored vehicles are engaging you at 1200 meter range you need something to take care of them like the m10 is perfect um other than that having three at guns in phase a is definitely necessary um just so that you have them in like either ambushing positions because they don't have that high veteran c so you can't don't really want these to engage at long range um but yeah definitely necessary to have in general the other thing is it's like bazookas I think these would be nice to have in the division so you could set up again ambushes but uh, if you're relying on your command voltages you should be okay um, and you do have quite a lot of AP in your tanks anyway and your recon so that's what you'll be relying on early on. Now moving into phase B you do get access to Fusilier Marines and I think if these guys were like high veteran C they might be worth bringing in but for 45 points I don't really feel like they're worth it 
And instead what I do is just bring in more availability of the 57mm AT guns, which gives you another five of them available, which is nice, as well as the uh, M10A1s. And the reason that I'm probably bringing both of these cards in phase B is because I want to be able to pick from both. Like it's not ideal in terms of total availability, like ideally you drop the M10s and have more of them available in phase C, but you're never going to buy this many. Your income doesn't ever go up that much. Like in phase C, if you're playing in a 40 minute game, you're working with what, 2,300 points. So yeah, it's just not going to really work out. You can have as many M10s as you like, but you're never going to be able to bring them all in. So yeah, anyway, just bring in the card of the 57mm AT guns with the M10s so that I can basically pick between them if I need to. And then in phase C, just more M10s available because fuses and marines aren't really worth bringing in at that stage. Now moving on to the anti-air. The anti-air in my division is rather lackluster, I'm not going to lie. Um, it's actually quite scary. I'm probably going to switch this out actually. Um, the Bofors are just probably all you need, in my opinion. As long as you keep them alive, I think setting up like a flak wall with the, the Bofors should be enough to like defend your artillery, which is the main idea of having any anti-air in the, in the armor division. Like in phase A, you're not going to really be spending any um, of your points on anti-air because you just can't afford to. In phase B and C, then you'll start to. But... Like, you're going to need it in phase B at least, especially if you're up against, for example, the new 16th Luftwaffe, because the artillery needs to be protected against airstrikes in order to take out the enemy anti-air yeah, yourself and just, like, flak 88s in general, because you can't push your armor into flak 88s, of course. So you're going to want to take them out, but you need something to protect the thing that's taking them out, and that's what the Bofors are for. I did have the uh, GMC Bofors, on uh, the trucks here but these can be strafed to death and uh, can get killed very easily so yeah just switching them out to the bofors there quickly um, definitely a good idea and again more availability is is good as well so yeah that's that and uh, i mean you can get high availability of the m16s but only 800 meter range not really enough to stop airstrikes and you want to be hitting them preemptively to the point where you make them fall back before they can drop bombs hit rockets and so on um, the M15s work really well, but uh, you don't get enough of them availability in one card. And same goes in Phase C. I mean, you can bring in more in Phase C, but you need them in Phase B. Uh, so there you go. Now, yeah, I don't know. The, the thing is, I'm kind of like mixed with this division. Like you need the anti-air and preferably I'd have more availability, but I just find I use the activation points elsewhere. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Now in the uh, air tab, or artillery tab, sorry, uh, we're looking at 81mm mortars in phase A. The 60mm mortars with 900m range just not enough, so 81mm mortars do the job. I don't have that much supply available in phase A because I've only got the, uh, the GMC uh, trucks in phase B. So I bring those in to harass early on and uh, maybe try and pin down enemy... Uh, like AT guns and so on with more precision. But in phase B, I have the M21s. Now these are mortar half tracks with the 1200 meter range, a lot more reliable, a lot more tanky. You know, they're, they're harder to take out and uh, they're 100 points with a 50 cal, quite nice. Um, then I also have the M7 Priest, which is great for the longer range engagements and perfect for taking out things like that KT8s, um, which I think is the, the main issue that uh, the second armoured will come up against. Uh, you can generally take care of like enemy tanks quite nicely, but it's the emplaced units that are really are the problem. So bringing in like some heavy artillery to take care of that is exactly what you need. I used to bring in the off map, the OP M4A2, but I just found that having more like direct fire artillery is just a lot more reliable for killing off the heavier like emplaced units that you come up against. Now in the air tab, things haven't changed a bit really. I think the Spitfires 
that I have are exactly the same. I have Spitfires available in Phase A just to shoot down enemy recon aircraft really and uh, also just enemy strike aircraft that people might decide to bring in. Just having something there to, to have a presence in Phase A is quite nice. You can also use them as uh, ground suppression but not really recommended since they have quite low ammunition. But yeah, they're quite nice and it gives you a good amount of availability on fighters. In Phase B, I then have the Spitfires with the two 15 HE power bombs, good enough to bomb out most AT guns and uh, pin down infantry very easily. Also, can be okay at pinning down tanks and stuff as well, but I wouldn't rely on it too much. Uh, in Phase C, I then have the Spitfire Mark 9s with the 1 star veteran C and some DB 73s with the four 15 HE power bombs. So, the air tab is pretty lackluster and honestly I could probably drop the Spitfires in phase A to just allow me an extra activation point that I could probably put into anti-air like that would might actually be a genuinely good change like having the less Spitfires and rely more on anti-air you could just have more bofors for example um, but I don't know I think I like the flexibility of the of the Spitfire Mark 9 it can be used in, in various situations it's not too expensive as well um, so yeah, that's your lot. That's pretty much it. There's not really much that changes in the air tab um, other than whether or not you want more or less fighters. Uh, the lightnings are just kind of useless. Um, as for the DBs, they all have the same payload. You just get more of them in phase C. So that's why I wait until phase C because that's when I actually have points to spend. And you can bring in again the P38 lightnings but and these guys have actually two 25 HE power bombs, but they're just too brittle and they get shot down very easily, like by the slightest amount of AA. So you've got to be in a perfect situation to use these really well. And yeah, that's about it. So we'll leave it there. The main thing that I would recommend changing is possibly dropping the phase A Spitfires for more anti air. But uh, overall, uh, let's talk about a little bit how the, the deck works. It's very aggressive. I think a lot of people know that. The 2nd Armoured French, very, very aggressive division. You push really hard in phase A with your like relatively elite recon, the M8 Spy, along with the uh, M3A3s and the M5A1s. Like One of each of those in, like a, in a push at the start is, works really well. Supported by your elite infantry and also just the Voltages and Pioneers can like hold ground for you. And then in phase B, you can start bringing in like the heavier armor. It's quite good for that phase, like a three-star M4A2, really, really good. And the two-star M4A3 with a 76 mil can really do a lot of damage. So focus on that. If you're struggling with like in-place units, then you can bring in the artillery. Make sure you support it with anti-air. And yeah, then in phase C, if you haven't made enough ground, then you're kind of doomed. But you still have a decent chance to do a lot of damage with the M4A3 76mm in phase C as well as all the M10s available in, in the anti-tank tab. And that's kind of where you make up for your availability of tanks. So there you have it. Hopefully you guys have uh, found out a bit more about the uh, second armoured from this uh, video. Um, of course I will leave the deck code in the description and let me know of course what you think about my division and uh, what you do with your owns. But that's all for now, so thanks for watching and goodbye.